to talk to you, and I have a couple helpers that are coming down right now. Um, but today, I happen to find this, and it reminds me that I have to trust God's timing. It might not always be my timing, but I have to trust God's timing. So I have some helpers who are going to be helping me, and these four up here are going to help us with our theme for today. And it's called We Trust God's Timing. And they have some motions that they're going to help with. So look at them, watch them, and then you're going to kind of follow along throughout the rest of our, of, of our lesson today. So guys, help me out. We trust God's timing. Show us how it's done. We trust God's timing. Okay, did you get that? We trust God's timing. Like you have a watch on your hand. All right? So, so these guys are going to help me out today with reminding us of that thing. Now I have another couple helpers. This is Gracie. She's my youngest. She's in K4 here. Can you give her a hand of round applause? She is going to be my finish line. All right? And then I have another helper. I kind of know her pretty good too. Oh. I have another helper who I know pretty good, and her, this is Joelle, and she's in kindergarten. So let's welcome Joelle. Now, there's going to be times where we have to trust God's timing, and we might feel like we're in a race. So Joelle and I here are going to have a race. We have to see who's going to touch Gracie's hands first, okay? So, on your marks, Joelle, get set, go! Very good. That sets the stage 
for us for today. Thank you, Joelle. Thank you, Gracie. Okay. Thank you for your help that you guys can turn that to us. So we are talking about trusting God's timing today. Now, the Bible is filled with so many different examples of trusting God's timing. So I'm going to open up to 1 Samuel 16, chapter 16, verse 13. And what's happening here is uh, David is still kind of a young boy, and uh, King Saul is the Saul for the Israel, or is the king for the Israelites. So we're going to kind of jump in here, and um, Samuel is one of the priests that kind of are over God's people as well. So. 1 Samuel 16:13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went off. Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendants said to him, See, an evil, see, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirits from God comes upon you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen the son of Jesse from of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey and loaded it with bread, a skin of wine, and young goat, and sent it with them, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit of God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul, and he would feel better, and the spirits would leave him. Isn't it cool how God set the way before David? They're talking about David, who's someday going to be King David. But David had to do some things. You know, he, he was faithful and even learning to play the harp. He was faithful in his, in his uh, spot that his dad left him, tending the sheep. He was faithful in all of these ways that helped prepare him for when they brought him into the king's house, King Saul's home. And so again, it's just another example for us to see that we have to what? Guys, help me out. We never know what God's timing is going to be. Do you know it's amazing? Time after time, God also shows us other times in the Bible of where his timing is perfect. One that probably many of you are familiar with is in the book of Exodus. In Exodus, the Israelites are um, under King Pharaoh in Egypt, and they're kind of stuck in there. Um, and they have to make bricks, and they're like, oh, I just want to get out of here. Lord, when are you going to redeem us? When are you going to deliver us? And so we're going to look at Exodus 14, 21. And it says, then Moses, okay, so I'm sorry, let me read back for a minute. Moses is saying, I'm going to go to King Pharaoh and ask him to let my people go. And so you guys all have to listen. Let my people go. He doesn't. All the plagues come in. And so finally, the last one, Pharaoh says, okay, go. But then he changes his mind. So here, guess what? They're racing out. They're racing out. And also behind them, Pharaoh's army is chasing them. Egyptians. 
Egyptians and their chariots and their horses. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place, and the Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept the sea back over him. He's delivering the Egyptians, or he's delivering the Israelites. His timing is perfect, just in the time. Here he comes, and this water just starts pouring over him. And she came up behind him, 
and touched the edge of his cloak. Just touched the edge of it. She didn't even talk to him. She didn't say, hey, Jesus, it's me. She didn't say, oh, please heal me. All she did was touch the very edge of his cloak. And, the, and her uh, bleeding immediately stopped. Then Jesus, surprise, surprise, goes, who touched me? Now, can you imagine his disciples going, who touched you? There's tons of people around you. How do we know who touched you? But he said that he felt that power go from him. In the presence of all the people, the woman came forward and she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. So we're not talking about someone who's just a little itty bitty and who maybe has been sick for a year or a month or a week. Sometimes when we get sick, we're tired of being sick after one week. This woman has been sick for years and years and years. She might have been thinking like, where are you, God, in my race? When Joelle was way ahead of me and she won, she might be going, God, where are you? But she kept having faith and her faith healed her. So no matter how long we pray about something, we need to remember that So whether you're waiting for deliverance to be helped in the situation, whether you're waiting for just your heart's desire to come true, whether you're waiting for healing, we have to trust God's timing. So let's talk about this with things that can happen with us today. How can you apply it? You're probably not going to be racing through river on dry land. Most of you probably aren't going to be having any children for a little while here. And you probably aren't going to have the opportunity to walk behind Jesus in a crowd and touch him. But you are going to have the opportunities to have different things come up where you might need deliverance. Maybe you're having a problem with a friend. And you're just saying, God, please deliver me from this. Help me. I'm so tired of being bothered by this person every day. Help me, God. I need help. I can't do this anymore. So we have to trust God's timing. And maybe in the process we have to learn for grace, show grace to others. Maybe when someone's being mute to us, we have to show forgiveness to them. Maybe we need to, to learn some skills on um, not bothering others, controlling our tongue so that we don't hurt others. What things, are God, what things are God trying to teach you? Is he trying to teach you something? You have to ask him during that time while trusting this timing. Because you can learn something in every, in every situation. So you might be needing to, to be delivered for something. But trust God's timing and don't give up. So then, what about our wants and desires? Maybe you've been talking to mom and dad and have been saying, I really want a kitty cat. I really want a dog. Please just let me get a pet. And they're saying, no, 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 no. But what do you need to learn in the meantime? Maybe you need to learn responsibility. When mom and dad says, come home and start your homework right away and get it all done, then you need to do that. Or maybe if she says, I need you to clean up your room, you need to show that you're obedient, you need to show that you're responsible, and learn those skills, those character things along the way. Because maybe in the long run, you'll be able to have one. Maybe it's when you're a grown-up, maybe it's when you're a child. But God's going to hear your wants and your desires, but you have to learn things along the way. The Israelites, they had to learn to be patient. They had to learn to trust God, even when things looked a little crazy. Sarah, she had to learn patience. She had to learn that God had a bigger and better plan for her. This woman who touched the hem of his garment to be healed, she had to learn patience. She had to learn trust. So there's something that you can learn, too. Maybe you've been praying for healing for someone. Maybe someone's sick in your family. Or maybe you need something healed in your own body. We need to continue to be faithful in that because our God is faithful. We need to help me out, guys. That means whether it's making sense to us or not, we have to trust God's timing. You never know what God's going to do in your future, just like he did in, in uh, David's life. Maybe he's going before you and saying, oh, I need you to learn this skill now because in the future you're going to use it. Maybe you're learning to be a friend now because someone's going to need you as a great friend later. 
Maybe you're learning to be responsible now because you're going to have a very important job when you're getting older. So we need to know that we need to trust God's timing no matter what. One more time, do it with these guys so we really get it engraved in our heads. We, we trust God's timing. Very important. So when we're praying, we need to remember to trust God's timing. So if you guys will just uh, bow your heads with me as we close this time and just pray. And in your hearts, we're just really offering our needs up to God, but then knowing that we're going to trust Him, whether it seems like He's right next to us, whether it seems like He is really, really late in giving His answer, or whether we feel that He is right next to us, we're going to trust God's time. So, dear Lord, we just thank you so much. We thank you that you are God, and so we can trust your time. We thank you that no matter even if we're feeling like you're not there, or maybe we're worried or scared about something, we can still trust your timing. It's not going to be our timing all the time. But you have a plan for us. And you have a, you've gone before us and you're going to be right there next to us. And so we need to trust your timing. And Lord, when we feel like we're all alone, please bring back to us that we trust your timing and that you don't leave us and you're always with us and supporting us and giving us the strength. Lord, we thank you that you know what's best for us. And that when we trust you, we can learn things along the way. We can have our character built. And then we can trust in your time. So whatever these students are walking through, whether they are feeling a difficult time with a friend, or whether they are praying for healing for someone that they know or themselves, or Lord, whether they just don't know whether who their friend is at school, or, or who they're going to play with at recess, or... Or just, Lord, whatever is weighing them down, I pray that you will just remind them that we can trust your timing. Your timing is perfect. You're never too late. You're never too early. But you're right on time. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Be with each one of these students as they go throughout their week. And just help them to trust in you. We love you, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you give my helpers a round of applause? Thank you. Have a wonderful day.